Welcome back, everybody. Baking can seem intimidating with precise measurements and painstaking techniques sometimes, but it doesn't have to be. Chef Gemma Stafford believes that baking should be fun and fearless. Her popular, very popular online cooking show, Bigger Boulder Baking, has 5 million fans as she focuses on making baking approachable with practical tips and how to's. Chef Gemma's book, Bigger Boulder Baking, is out, so we wanted to host her in our kitchen because she brought lots of chocolates and she has really good <laughs> tips. It's so nice to meet Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to be here. How did you? I love your Irish accent. Thank so you. Beautiful. Tell me a bit about where you grew up and how you came to love chocolate so much. So I grew up in Ireland. I moved to the United States around 11 years ago. Uh, my mom was a great cook, and actually, so um, if you have, if anybody knows an Irish mammy, they're very prevalent in your life. And she's um, all the way throughout my book. Wonderful. She um, has given shared recipes with me. She has uh, taught me so much stuff. Before I went to culinary school, she was really my first teacher. So um, very, very important. But yeah, a lot of what I do today and a lot of my baking. It started in Ireland, and as I traveled the world as a professional chef, um, I added to my repertoire, and that's what I put into the, my Bigger Boulder Baking Cookbook. I love that. And you start your show with saying, hi, bold bakers. Yeah. Uh, and the idea is you want us to experiment, not be afraid. And that's Yeah, you nailed it, which is um, my recipes are, I try to make them as accessible as possible. And, you know, I love to say, uh, Bigger Boulder Baking is about a fearless approach to baking mm -hmm. anytime, anywhere. And it's just getting down into the nooks and crannies of a recipe, just the information that you need to know to set you up for success. Mm -hmm. And so, what are we going to do today? We're going to do, we're gonna do stuff. This is so cool. And we're doing dark chocolate, which yep. your mother loves and you and I love. So, so Margaret, let mm -hmm. me tell you, I'm going to get you to help me out here. Yeah. In my, so, we're making chocolate soup. So, this is a little bit of a mix between a mousse and a grown up chocolate pudding. I love it. And that's why we're using the darker chocolate. Okay. Uh, in here, I have a little bit of milk. I'm going to add, would you mind adding in some cream? All of this? Yes, please. Okay, very good. Add a little bit of extra richness. And then you can go ahead and add in that chocolate. Mm -hmm. That's a bittersweet chocolate. Ooh, I don't want to splash That's okay, on you. you got it in there. All right, there we go. And we're just going to let that melt for a few minutes. So, this recipe is from a chapter in my book called Pots and Pans. Now, um, I mentioned about accessibility. This, the, in the book, I have it written. The chapters are all broken down into the biggest pieces of kitchen equipment you would need. So I have a whole chapter of recipes, desserts from from um, dinner parties to like little kind of sneaky snacks that you can make uh, on the stovetop. And then with I've, just a pan. With just a pan. That's so. That cool. don't need the oven at all. Or I have a whole chapter where you don't even need an oven at all, like no baking. Wow. And then I've got a pan. I'm sorry, I've got a chapter that it's um, everything is made in, by hand in a wooden spoon and bowl. So I really tried to make it just to break it down and make it as easy as possible I for love people. I that. And what a great way to learn to cook if you have teenagers yeah. who like doing this sort of thing or or kids. Yeah, absolutely. You know, then you've got some things they can do without even having to to put them near the stove. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a like, you know, when you think who is this book for? It's for everybody. Yeah, it you sounds know? like it. Is I, there a trick to how you melt the chocolate or when you stir it or any of that? That's a really good question. Do you know what I do? Chocolate doesn't like to be over melt, uh, over mixed. Um, it can separate, and mm -hmm. this is a bit of baking uh, nerdiness for you. But uh, <laughs> it, if you mix it too much, it can get kind of oily and separate. So I usually just let it melt in the residual heat of the cream and the milk. Right. So don't mess with it. So too we're just much. yeah, we're just going to that. He's just going to come to a simmer there. Okay. And then we're going to finish it off. But in the books, like, as you can see, this is only a few ingredients, a few steps. Um, really easy, and it makes for a great dinner party. It makes for um, you know if you want to have it, make it for yourself on a Tuesday night and have the mm -hmm. leftovers like the next night. That's totally fine. You know, it's just a really fun recipe. That's all we have to do. And this is what it looks like. This when is you're what all it looks done, like. Right? So what have you done on top here? So there's a little bit of cream there and some grated chocolate, just to zhuzh it up a little bit. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So tell me about some of these other dishes while this is heating. Sure. Uh, first of all, the brownies and the cookies. I could have nearly not take my eyes off them when I so came in. These are my best ever brownies. Uh, they're, I had to share the recipe in the book because I've been making these for a very long time. They are the perfect fudgiest. I don't know if you're a fudgy brownie person yes. or a cakey. No, no, fudgy. Who's, who's a cakey? I don't, I don't know. know. I have to say that, but like seriously, who is? <laughs> Fudgy. And if you are, please just change. No judgment. No, but no, I'm there's <laughs> judgment. <laughs> silent judgment, Margaret. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, said the, I said the silent part out loud. 
Um, so like really fudgy brownies. Um, this is a fan favorite. I had to include it in the book. And um, same with my best ever chocolate chip cookies. Look at these. This came from um, a Michelin star restaurant that I worked in in San Francisco. And I adapted the recipe a little bit. Really like the like when you go to a bakery and you get those really lovely bakery chocolate chip cookies, mm -hmm. again with bittersweet chocolate. So is that a bar you've just broken up? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for so that, I use, I use a straight up bar. Oh, and, um, love it. You know, you bake them for a few minutes, you don't over bake them, you get mm -hmm. chewy in the middle, chew, um, crunchy on the outside. Margaret, this is coming up to the heat there, okay. so I'm going to get you. It looks so good. Uh, here I have a little bit, I have a little whisk here, what I'm going to do. Right. Here I have a little bit of corn flour. And it's just oh, to thicken it. Yeah, it's just to thicken it. Okay, I was wondering how that was going to get thick enough to be kind of soupy pud pudding. Yeah. Well, what happens is when chocolate heats to a certain temperature, it, it will automatically thicken itself. But then we're giving oh, it a little beautiful. bit of a helping hand. So that's easy enough. Yeah, that's easy enough. Beautiful. So that's it. And we're just going to let that heat up and just thicken a little bit longer, let the, it activate. And then if you wouldn't mind, Margaret, adding in uh, our vanilla extract Alrighty. there. Lovely. And then just a little bit of a pinch of that salt because chocolate and salt are best friends. Yeah, talk about that a little bit. Why, why salt? You know, the, I, I say this all the time. Chocolate is, sorry, sorry, excuse me. Salt is a seasoning, but it's not just for savory. It is also a sweet seasoning. And chocolate, um, salt, what it does, it enhances the flavor of all the other ingredients. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid. So when don't you be see afraid. that in a recipe, no, be don't generous. be afraid. You that salt, look, so look at that. Oh my good. gosh. You salted <laughs> butter. Um, you know, add a little bit of extra salt. You know, um, I, I always add it in. It really will just elevate all the flavors in what you're making. That's such good advice about the salted yeah. butter because I think people are confused about which one to use for baking. Tell me a little bit about are they are they cupcakes, muffins over there? So what do these we have? are called fairy cakes. Now in Ireland, this is one of the first recipes you would learn how right. to make. It's just it's a it's a it's a cupcake. But uh, we call them fairy cakes. And um, this is in my chapter for wooden spoon and bowl. So you can make these totally by hand. And they're just really fun, easy way. And they're like very like whimsical looking and nice for kids to make. Yeah, they and look good, so much fun. Kind of introduction to baking. You know, if you want to start out somewhere kind of small, they're like really great for like little hands. Oh my gosh, you've got to get the recipe book. And then you put things in such pretty dishes. I can't wait to see. <laughs> Gemma kindly shared her recipe for chocolate soup and you will find it on our website. And then we'd love to know how you liked making it. So be sure to share with us on our Facebook page. Pictures are welcome. Oh my gosh. Here, Margaret, I'm going to give you a little bit of this. I'm not going to fight you. There you go. I am Let's not going to argue about this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is exactly the breakfast of champions. You can make it a little bit thicker if you want. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? Mm hmm. <laughs> you may have to read this. Gemma will be cooking <laughs> from, her book, <laughs> from her book at the University, the University of Puget Sound tonight at 7. Just Admission is on. free. You're going to love it. She's really entertaining. And <laughs> <laughs> Jim is guaranteed a good time. Jim is <laughs> adding a few things, but that's fine. No, it was right, no, there. It was right there. It was. Thank you. When we come back and we look at the origins of chronic diseases, going much back further into our ancestry than you might think, chocolate is the answer for this. You are what your grandparents ate after this break. <laughs>